Man, that thing is loaded. Hi everyone, good to see you. Here's the Bodega camping fridge we talked about. I hope you can hear the audio a little bit. It's pretty windy up here. I was testing this little friend. Here's some footage as well of how it looks like from the outside, also from the setup with uh, the solar panels, with the solar generator, which is somewhere behind here. I have to admit, I'm always happy that it's shady, but not when I want to test some solar stuff, so... <laughs> but we did it, and I want to show you what it looks inside. I want to give you also my summary at the end of the video for this camping fridge at the end. When the flies don't eat me alive, so we'll see. So you can see the size here compared to me. You can see here the fridge side. Currently, everything nice and cool, even the ice cubes are nice and cool right now. So we had this unit running the whole weekend. In terms of, did it hold the temperature and everything else? Let's look into that. Here you can see on both the app and the fridge, 41 degree for the fridge side. That's great. And also current temperature for the freezer side, 28 degree, which is the same. So the Bluetooth works really well. But did it really hold the temperature? The answer really quick, no, it did not. The fridge was running at Echo at the beginning and uh, that's what caused a lot of temperature differences. And it means that as soon as you open the lid, it was able to heat up really quick again, and then you closed it, and it, it took a certain time until the refrigerator started to cooling down. And uh, that for sure caused some, in my opinion, issues that it kept the temperature. So I realized that and I changed it to maximum. So starting with that, it was better to keep the temperature at least. But keep in mind, it's super hot out there, even in maximum, and the sunlight is straight coming or shining onto the box. It's really struggling to keep the temperature low. And that's something I realized during night. It works very, very well, very, very well. But um, during the day when the sun is shining on the fridge itself, it's struggling um, to keep the temperature very low. But um, everything which was frozen also was still frozen even though it got up to 28 degree Fahrenheit in between, which was really a lot. A um, little bit below um, freezing, but still it was too much in my opinion. The fridge. So I feel like there's a little downside to this when you open it up. That here on the left, everything is freezer compartment, which just you can take out and put back in. On the right side as well, you can see a bunch of stuff in there but it's so loaded and heavy and it's even coming out on the side it's quite difficult to get everything out so it's stuck on each other and you always have to pull out everything else when you want to reach something which is on the bottom and you always have when you have this as a freezer compartment you have as a freezer set up it's always difficult um, when you open it that you are fast enough that it's not cool, uh, heating up too quickly so that's something you definitely have to keep in mind Guys, I had my solar generator connected to the Victron VRM portal the whole time. And as you can see, I just scrolling down and having this little craft, which I'm zooming in, um, it showed that it's pulling, basically the fridge is pulling the whole time energy of the solar generator, as well as, as my little router is pulling energy of it the whole time, but constantly it tries to recharge a little bit. Um, as mentioned, I sadly had a very shady spot where we've been, so it was not all the time in the sun, but it had some peak times and um, slow times, so it was kind of balanced-ish, but um, I didn't want to hide this Victron VRM portal uh, with the Raspberry Pi 
which uh, I showed you in this video up here. Uh, that's, I think, pretty cool that I was able to access this all the time. It was tracking all informations. So here, the dashboard, and uh, regardless of the location which is shown there, um, I didn't change that. So for my summary, would I buy it or would I recommend using this Bodega TWW59 camping fridge and freezer? I think it depends on your use case. <laughs> For me, as you saw it in the video there, we went for camping and usually when we go camping, it's with a tent. And it felt like a little bit overkill having the solar generator, but also, which is already a big box. And then also having the camping fridge, which is, which is even a bigger box. And then on top, everything else, whatever we had with us. For such a weekend trip, it was too much, I feel like, for us, because just the two of us, we are able to handle it differently. But I think there are other use cases out there, which is certainly not only a two-day camping trip or three-day camping trip uh, where you keep it maybe in the car and you have a uh, constantly plugged in somewhere or you have a different power source and stuff like that or a second fridge or whatever perfect there are tons of use cases out there and the size is amazing but also let me say when you only have it on echo i'm not a fan of it that it turns off and then it heats up and cools down again. I, I, I don't like that very much. I would like to see a more consistent temperature. That's the only thing which I didn't like as much. And the fact that you put a food on top of each other and then you have to somehow get it out. If you have to always, during the day, if you go there more often to the fridge and have to take your stuff out, it can be exhausting, but it's as a second fridge, it is really good on wheels. It's nice to pull behind you. Um, as you also just saw here. So I think it's it's a great uh, thing, definitely. But look at the price tag on Amazon, uh, which you know, here's a really quick picture, which, uh, from, which is from July 2021. And yeah, let me know if you think uh, something like that is necessary at all or not. But uh, I hope this gives you enough information to make your own decision. Thanks for watching. Tschüss.